notes. This will be good. This is a, this is good. We're dipping. So now we'll dip in. We went from Jim, massive amounts of data to you talking about AI, and then we're going to dive back into virtual reality coming up next. So let's see, 8.29. Let me give everybody another minute. Yeah. Let's see. I've got eight thirty, so I will slowly. Ah, let's just do it. 8.30, okay. it's time to go. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we go with the 8.30 track. We have uh, Carlos Palma, and his presentation is Talk to the Map, AI-Driven Geospatial um, Mashup. And uh, Carlos is a full-stack developer with a DevOps profile and projects centered around data analysis, machine learning, uh, natural language processing, ETL processes, uh, API development, RESTful clients, microservices architecture. Man, that's a lot of stuff. And uh, deploying services on AWS. And uh, with that, Mr. Carlos, take it away. Okay. Thank you very much, Randall. No problem. Okay. So thank you also for the presentation. And yes, a lot of things. I'm a little bit of a one-man army, let's say. So uh, today we are talking of a recent experience uh, experience that we that we carried out on on our company and it is the to try to merge together the the worlds of the um, artificial intelligence and also the um, the assistants uh, like uh, the ones that you get on on Google or the ones that you get on Alexa and Try to integrate it with the uh, worlds of uh, the maps and um, cartography and uh, navigate uh, the um, complex world of, of this. Uh, well, a little bit of background about uh, about our company. Um, I work for Wadaltel. It is a a, a civil based uh, company. We have uh, quite a lot of experience. We have been working on on these areas for about 30 years. Uh, we have uh, expertise in e-government and also a geospatial information system. Uh, working almost exclusively with uh, public institutions, so our clients normally are our administrations. And what we work at all the levels, ranging from European institutions to local government, and um, we also we all, we don't only have presence in in Spain, but we also have presence in in other parts of the world. For example, uh, South America. We have a, an office in Santiago de Chile. We have been working with the with the government in uh, several projects. So we are more a bit of an international uh, company. And what what we are talking about here now is a news case uh, that uh, revolves around the, the experience of what you have to go through every time you want to generate a new map. Do you, have, do you want a, a visualization of, uh, let's say, well, taking, for example, the, the situation right now on, on Islas Canarias with the, with the volcano? So imagine that you want to uh, uh, generate a map that it has a base layer of a uh, uh, satellite image. And do you want also to uh, print over them uh, um, uh, vector features of uh, the advance of, of the lava? And do you want also to uh, add uh, some controls on the, on the map? 
and then you want a specific symbology of do you want to set a, a legend? Uh, well, uh, sometimes, well, uh, many times indeed. The um, the problem with that is the information available from the geospatial side. It is, is a little bit uh, disorganized, and it is very complex to, um, or at least for a non-expert users. Uh, what are the, the sources available? What kind of information can you find in each source? Uh, or even, but it is a layer. I don't know what you're talking about. Just show me the map. So um, we try to. Uh, fill the gap uh, with a with an assistant for this, because it will be good to uh, you if you are a citizen interested in in creating a, a map visualization to have an interpreter for for all these terms and all the orders that you need to give to to the to the map visualization tool. So yeah. We we have been working on well toying with the with this idea and recently due to uh, other projects that we had in the, in the company uh, we saw the opportunity to um, uh, integrate um, a natural language uh, assistant to uh, transform your own orders expressed in natural language uh, as you will talk to uh, to a colleague in the in your company and uh, automatically uh, translate these to orders to the um, to the client of to the mapping client and uh, move around the map uh, zoom in zoom out add layers uh, remove layers uh establish a, a an extent for for the map what it, what is the the big box that did you, you want to to visualize on on the map and without the need to avoid for complex syntax or to uh, go through um long uh, form for data and uh, how many list of layers do uh, do you have available so is, and also a way to to query to query them and and get information okay so the main pillars for for this work have been the for the mapping client we have been using api Thenic. this is a, a tool developed by the center of uh, the national center of geographic information here on spain uh, it's a completely open source client that uh, you can find it on on GitHub, and uh, this uh, this tool they has a, a set of hooks uh, to to integrate it on on JavaScript applications to load layers from external services or from uh, uh, data that you that you have if you want to provide that data on GeoJSON format or GML format. Uh, you can integrate them and mash up all the layers. And uh, then uh, on top of that, we, can, we have added the, the assistant component using the framework RASA. Uh, RASA is, uh, is a framework for, for building uh, well, chatbots and um, virtual assistants. And uh, it is also completely, completely open source. And it is uh, well. It has the the support for uh, extending the actions that can perform, integrated with other services or other endpoints, even customize uh, the pipeline of uh, natural language uh, uh, processing that it does. And well, uh, as I commented for for the for the API technique, uh, we have integration with the. Uh, the normal standard uh, services, so we can integrate it with uh, WMS, WMTS, uh, WFS, all all of these things. Okay, so the functionality uh, to in to interact with the map, it is contained on the API Thinig. Uh, the API has the particularity that uh, you can 
uh, have a, a set of controls to the map that it can be they can be uh, customized. So if you want a scale and you want a measurement tool, and do you want the, to show the legend and do you want the layer selector or do you want none of that? Uh, you can quickly uh, add it or remove it e using the the hooks on on JavaScript for that, uh, and also the the interaction, the, the moving around the map, the zooming in, all of this uh, is performed uh, on the client side. And then the AI the AI part. So through Rasa, what uh, what we can do is to um create a set of uh, examples of what orders should the assistant uh, attend to uh what they what what are what are the orders that a user could possibly say and that's, those are called intents in the in the syntax of uh rasa and then uh these intents map them to uh new actions or uh, could be internal actions for for the assistant, just uh, display a message, or um, go through go to to uh, an endpoint of an API that you have configured, or uh, return uh, a message with a payload, and the payload uh, could uh, fire uh, JavaScript events and update your own client. So, bringing everything together, we created the set of uh, of rules that we wanted to to apply on the assistant. Uh, we added uh, rules for zooming in, for uh, centering the map in in a not only in a certain B box, but uh, to center uh, the map into uh, uh, using a toponym. Uh, for example, if you want to, to center the map of Spain, but uh, you only want to see uh, the region of Madrid, for example, for, well, you, you can express it. Um, these rule, these actions, these intents, sorry, are uh, then uh, processed by the by the chatbot using the word to vec approximation. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar, is uh, to uh, get all the instances that you have of uh, possible strings and establish similarities with one, between some of them to create uh, um, vectors of words. Uh, and then once you have a new instance of, uh, of a message, you compare it to, to the set of vectors that you have. And then you decide that it is uh, it belongs to uh, to a certain to a certain vector. So this way we can associate the the in, the intents with the new message of the of the users. Then uh, once the intent has been detected, the action is returned. The payload for this uh, fires up the the event that you need to update on the mapping client. And then we, we just uh, render the, the map with the settings that we have applied in, in real time and uh, generate the visualization that, that you want. All of this, we we bundled everything together in, in, in a Docker container to serve the static files for the, for the API, serve the endpoint for, for the assistant, and uh, also having the, the the backend for the available layers and the available uh, features and all the available uh, information for the map. So um, the experiment uh, well was um, very promising for us, uh, but. Uh, the main uh, limiting limited resource on here is. Uh, the others or the intents that uh, the assistant can can handle, because uh, in the world of uh, uh, virtual assistants or chatbots, um, it is practically an infinite task to uh, define a set of uh, example, 
train them, uh, check against the, uh, a set of, uh, of testing instance for questions, also uh, test it with, uh, with human interaction, and detect what are the orders that the, the users have expressed, but they did not have any, any result. They were not associated to, to, any, to any event. So uh, to um, ease on this part and uh, have a, a greater array of uh, information that can be provided to the, to the system, uh, we have uh, in mind to uh, expand these to the first consumption of the discovery services. So um, if you have the whole information of services, layers, uh, features that the uh, a data provider has on the on their services, then we can we could create an integration with uh, with their metadata, check uh, what are the, the labels there, the identifiers, the, the legend names, add them all together to the to the to the assistant. So once you get a message, you go to the to the um, to the discovery service and execute a query and uh, check if the if the message contains any any keyword or any set of keywords that could be relevant and return it to 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 the user. So for example, if you are asking for uh, a layer a satellite image layer with a certain scale then you can go to the to the metadata and check if it is available we also can uh, integrate this with uh, elastic search or even the nominating service from openstreetmap to have a, a full text search of the of the orders of the users so um, we can have a uh, we can have the information for uh, road names, addresses, uh, anything the, you will you will need to to query. And uh, finally, to give back to the to the original uh, source for this is to integrate integrate this uh, assistant as a plugin for the for the API thingy because the, you can add also uh plugins that extend the functionality of the api and uh, bundle there everything to to any user that would like to deploy a, a visualization uh, a client for visualization uh, uh in their organization with this with this element so um we have a, a little bit of uh, a demo. We have a, a video. So if you give me just a moment, I will share my screen also with this. This is just a quick example of what we have. Um, what is it? Um, yes, right here. Okay. So uh, we have we start with a with a blank page. You get the message. Talk to talk to me to create your map. Do you want? Uh, I want a, a map uh, uh, of the whole world. If you want, we load the 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 base layer of OSM. We can change the the center to so we want to move the mm, the center of the map to to Spain and then uh, you can ask them to uh, change the the layer. So if you don't want to use the the OpenStreetMap, map, you can change it to a, a to a national center of geographic information layer. Now you can add the, the control to move the map uh, with your mouse. Uh, 
and then also adding the scale. Also the layer switcher for for the map. Yes. Then you can remove the, the control if you don't want the scale anymore. Now then you can mash up uh, a different layer with the with the background. Uh, so we add the administrative units limits to to show the the, the regions of Spain. Then you get the, the geometries for each of them. And then you can also change the style for for this for this layer. It's also uh, adding an another layer inside of it. And then again, changing the the style. So you had you set the, the layer to transparent and to change the the borders of of the geometry to to gray. And then you can add uh, other data in uh, GeoJSON format. And this is a uh, this is a map of the uh, influence of the uh, the COVID in in Spain. And then add uh, some more information about the well, how big of an impact it has the the virus on in Spain. And finally. Uh, you can ask the the assistant to give you a a link to share the to share the map, and it will contain all the layers loaded, all the styles, and all the controls. So this is it. Um, well, I hope that you found it interesting, and well, I will answer any question that you may have. That was awesome. <laughs> that was really Thank good. <laughs> uh, I've got some questions. Um, okay. How, like, okay, hold on. Oh, okay. We do have a question. Is a demo interface available online? Uh, not at the moment. Sorry. Well, this is still a, a work in progress. So work in progress. we, we barely made it to, to force for you. <laughs> <laughs> You did good. Uh, how long did it take to develop this? Like from start to now? What was well, the um, this, uh, this one took about uh, two, three weeks. Oh, taking wow. into account that it has a small amount of, of rules to, to, to give to the assistant. But, so if, uh, you, if you ask it for data it doesn't have, does it say... It doesn't have the data. Like if you ask for yeah. something, it doesn't. Yeah, I will tell you that he can he can answer that that question right now. But it, it is something that it can be extended any time. So you don't have to build it any time every every time that you add anything new. So if you have the the old rule set, then yeah. you you give a new a new intent, you add to to the base, and you just have to well to, you you train again the system, but. Uh, Everything else uh, staying the same. Cool. Man. Uh, let's see. Uh, could it work with voice? Uh, that is something that's still uh, pending on us because we try to, to make it work with voice uh, to connect uh, Rasa with the pipeline of uh, speech to text. Uh, but we, we were unable to to create the connection because uh, the voice was uh, basically lost in the, in the middle of the communication within the service. 
Ah. And another question, does the AI speak only Spanish? Can it be extended to other languages? It can be extended to, to any language because uh, the way it works, it uh, it creates a, a base of, uh, vector, of vector words. So if you give them the examples in English, it will work in English the, the same as it is right now. Uh, this experience was in, was in Spain. It was in Spanish because uh, well, uh, it was more of an internal demo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And that was good. That, that runs through all the questions. That was a great demo. That was excellent. Awesome. Thank you very much. Okay. And I guess that's it. So we'll transition to the next guy and uh, or get that set up. So okay. excellent. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Uh, let's remove. Let's. Okay. I'm being instructed to fix the banners. I cried. Uh. Oh boy. You're, you're going to watch live. Uh, you're going to watch artisanal banner making at its finest because on Andrea, Andrea, uh, Andrea is here helping me and I'm going to ad lib while she is trying to help me. Oh, they want me to not talk. Oh, okay. I'll quit talking. 